When Netflix's adaption of Andrei Sapsquatchy's Witcher Saga was announced, it was supposed to be Netflix's answer to Game of Thrones, an epic fantasy series that would take over pop culture and break into the mainstream audiences and consciousness. That was the plan, and that was their pitch. Article after article was being written by mainstream media, YouTube video after YouTube video made about how this show could be, and was, the next Game of Thrones. I even made a video on this myself at one point. Henry Cavill being announced as Geralt, it really showed for many the intent from Netflix that were trying to compete with the likes of Game of Thrones and gave the idea that they were the heir to the legacy some credibility. They were putting their money where their mouth was. What was even more enticing was the fact that Henry Cavill was a huge fan of the books and the games. Things were looking good for this adaptation. Even after some of the controversial casting choices, Netflix was adapting one of the most beloved pieces of Polish fantasy with a huge Eastern European following. Plus, with CD Projekt Red's successful video games, bringing the story to other nations around the world, Netflix had the materials to make something very special. But somehow, despite all all these advantages, they really dropped the ball. Netflix wanted to make the next Game of Thrones, and they did, but not in the way you'd think, not in the way they wanted, as time would prove with the disaster that was Game of Thrones' eighth season. That Game of Thrones comparison they longed for would in fact be the kiss of death for the series. Before the first season of The Witcher aired, I was very optimistic about its outlook. Yes, I did feel that some of the casting did not fit, and I was also very public in the fact I think they cast Ciri too old. But going into season 1, all the trailers looked good, I was very surprised by the knowledge and commitment shown by Cavill. Plus, you had the showrunners and writers' assurance that they respected and loved the book, and that this was going to be a faithful adaptation. However, as we got closer to the launch of the show, and some of the set leaks came out, tweets from the showrunner were becoming more and more concerning. But I often find that Twitter isn't really the place for these nuanced debates and don't really pay attention to what a lot of producers and writers really say on there. But in my gut, I think I always knew The Witcher would never be the next Game of Thrones. It could be a fantastic show, yes, but I never felt it would reach that peak. The truth is, the success of Game of Thrones during its run in the early seasons was a lightning in the bottle moment, genre defining moment, I don't think I've seen for a fantasy IP since maybe the Lord of the Rings movies. To tell the truth, I did think the first season was quite decent. As someone who has read the books multiple times, I can say I absolutely loved the first episode, and if it carried on with that good start, I wouldn't be writing this essay right now. The Lesser Evil is maybe my favourite of the short stories, and I love Geralt and Renfri's dynamic in it, and how much we learn about Geralt as a character in such a short amount of time. It's also a great way to encapsulate what the life of a witcher is like, from the monster hunting to the social stigma. As the season went on, it was clear they were making some big changes to the source material. However, fleshing out Yennefer and Ciri's backstory was always going to be needed if the saga adaptation part to come was going to work. I maintain my point about the casting not really fitting for a lot of characters, but it was in no way really a deal breaker. At the time I gave season 1 a solid 8 out of 10. I wish they spent the first season just doing the best of the short stories from the first two books as a setup to the saga, but it was clear they wanted to skip to the main saga as story as quick as possible, hence why they blitzed through those first two books. The same error may I add that Game of Thrones made with A Feast for Crows and A Dance with Dragons, but three things really did set off alarm bells big time during this first season, with those fears being confirmed in season two. For me, a lot of the damage was done in the last few episodes of the season. Having Yennefer at the Battle of Sodden Hill did not work well if you ask me, and I think it took away a lot of the hope of Triss having any sort of meaningful character. They made the battle more about Yennefer than the battle and the heroism of the sorceresses involved and the huge losses they suffer. The battle coinciding with Geralt fighting Ciri was also a very odd choice and it felt very shoehorned in to give Yennefer something to do other than her interactions with Geralt in this first season. It all led to Geralt just stumbling across Ciri in the woods rather than the deep and compelling short story we get in the books with the whole Broccolon forest arc. That leads me to my biggest warning sign, how they absolutely butchered the whole Broccolon forest arc involving Ciri. If you ask anyone who's read the books about Broccolon, they will tell you the impact that short story has on Geralt and Ciri, how it's such an important part of their relationship and setting up the events of the saga. What we got in the show was not even a pale imitation, 
is utter fan fiction. As the credits rolled on that last episode of season one, I had a sinking feeling in my gut that this was not going to be a true adaptation of The Witcher. The showrunners so gladly, repeatedly spoke of that it was all smoke and mirrors to ensure people who cared about the books watched the season two would make even more drastic changes unlike season one season two had alarm bells ringing from the onset episode one was an adaptation of the short story a grain of truth and i say adaptation in the loosest terms possible in the book this story happens way before Geralt finds siri so the story had to be adjusted to factor her in this video is not meant to be a breakdown or a view of the show but all i would say is this and the writers seem to do this quite a lot they take the point of the story and the actions of the characters and rewrite them and misinterpret them in the worst ways. The butchering of a grain of truth was a warning for what was to come. I was hopeful things would pick up but it became very clear this version of the Witcher was going to be unrecognizable from any of the source material. The whole season just came off as poor fan fiction written by people who don't care for or understand the source material they are writing for. Unlike the first season, the changes the writers made were far more impactful. The whole concept of turning Eskel into a lesion was ludicrous. Yennefer losing her powers, betraying Geralt and the whole Witch in the Woods arc was out of character fanfiction at its worst. Series story just isn't working thanks to how poorly season 1 was handled in the back end. And for me personally, the way they wrote and treated Kair, perhaps one of my favourite characters, was shameful. Nothing about season 2 is salvageable save for Henry Cavill as Geralt. The writing is poor and disregards any semblance of the intent and meaning behind the source material. Dialogue is wooden and soulless, characters are inconsistent and a shadow of who they are being misrepresented in the worst possible way. All of which is sandwiched together with this new fan fiction plot that bears absolutely no resemblance to the source material. Now why is it important and why should you care? After all this is a song of ice and fire history in the lore channel. Well Game of Thrones downfall, this is a lesson for any kind of future adaptation or spin-off in the world of Ice and Fire of the importance of using your source material rather than fighting against it, trying to change it for the sake of your own story and vanity. Game of Thrones downfall came because they breezed through the source material, cutting huge vital parts of A Feast of Crows and Dance of Dragons in an attempt to get to the finish line quicker. Now, George not finishing the book's can also be seen as a factor. However, I still think the end result would have been drastically different if they had adapted Feast for Crows and A Dance of Dragons properly, rather than just rushing through it to try and get to the finish line. That race to the finish line resulted in the show getting further and further away from the source material as the seasons went, with more original content needed. Poor quality original content. The writers of Game of Thrones were being uplifted by the source material, and without it, they got found out Yes, they were going to run out of book to adapt at some point, but they would have at least had an easier time sticking the ending if they did not rush and cut books worth of content. But I believe the writers thought they were the reason Game of Thrones was a success, and not the blueprint of a story they were working from. That is what is so interesting about the case of The Witcher. The writers willingly blazed through the first two books in season one, and clearly had their own version of the saga they want to tell. If season two is anything to go by, and there is nothing wrong with that, Many good TV shows have done that in the past. But the thing is, if you're going to adapt a book in that way, you have to make sure what you are doing is as good as the story you are adapting. And at the very least, keep the heart and soul of the source material. The Witcher failed to do this. In the past, I've talked about my university degree and my dissertation on adapting books to film. So I know it's not an easy task and not all writers are cut out for it. But the number one lesson I learned was if you're working from good source material, stick to it as, as much as your circumstances allow you to. Instead, it seems the writer's intent was always to put their own spin on the show, tell their own story rather than the one the fans wanted and expected to see. Then when fans rejected the writer's vision, they doubled down to protect their own ego. For me, there are two things that jump out when it comes to the failure of Netflix's adaptation of The Witcher. The writer's attitude to the source material and the inability to take constructive criticism. During season two, they included a whole song sung by Jaskier directly aimed at the show's critics. In my view, it was a very silly and short-sighted move which only served to widen the divide and for many fans was the last straw. Then we have a one-off animated spin-off called Nightmare of the Wolf. While not perfect by any means, the animated movie prequel to the main show felt more like The Witcher with better character development than the main show. When your fun side project better catches the tone and vision of the world you're bringing to the screen, then we've got a serious problem. 
And let's not even get started on the live action spin off Blood Origin. The sorry tale of the troubled production in that mess could do with a video all to itself. Here's the thing about Game of Thrones out of the eight seasons, I personally would argue four are fantastic, two are great, one is poor and one is an utter car crash. By the time Game of Thrones declined in quality, it already established a strong and loyal fan base who were willing to ride it out to get to the end. The Witcher does not have that luxury. Many fans were jumping ship during season two. Cavill leave the show after season three is already in trouble, and that combined with the mess that was Blood Origin. Well, on Netflix's Witcher is in serious trouble, which is sad. As I really love the world and I really love the characters and I fear it will be many many years before we ever see another attempt and adaptation again. Hell, we might never. Netflix wanted The Witcher to be their Game of Thrones and it was, but not for the good reasons they wanted it to be.